Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be completing Hitman 2's third mission, Three-Headed Serpent, on Master Difficulty, with suit only and Silent Assassin fully intact, the entire herd turned off with no cuts and no saves. The mission is quite simply to eliminate all three targets, and the video will be broken down into two stages. The first stage is the plan. This is where I'll be scoping out the level, finding paths and secret passageways, picking up intel and making lots and lots of mistakes. The second stage is the execution. This is where all HUD options will be turned off and I'll carry out the plan that was designed in stage one. As always, the loadout for the mission will be the original starting location, 47 signature suit, the ICA gold baller, the lockpick MK3 and three coins. Welcome to Supercut, the series where we take an entire Let's Play and condense it into one video. My name is Mr. Supercut, and this is the planning stage of Hitman 2's Three-Headed Serpent. In run one, I proceeded straight ahead toward a large compound housing one of the targets, shut down the cameras, then knocked on the door using the grotesque hippo door knocker. When I was denied entry due to not being cartel, I headed right, climbed a vine which carried me over the boundary wall onto a conveniently placed scaffolding. After climbing down and shooting another camera, I crept cautiously along as inside the compound, guards would shoot on sight. I hugged the blue wall of the small security hut to see two guards approaching, so quickly retreated and shuffled around the outside. I climbed through an open window without either of the two guards spotting me and realising that I didn't have a melee weapon to take them out with, I hit restart. In run two, I took a detour by turning left before the compound and found exactly what I needed in the form of a red brick. I headed back to the security hut, clambered through the window, bricked the first guy and choked out the second, then dumped both their bodies. I kept a close eye on the two guards that I'd spotted in the previous run and when the coast was clear, I headed out of the door and pushed toward a metal gate, only to be spotted by the camera I'd failed to destroy. On the other side of the gate, two guards had been made aware of my trespasses, so I quickly took them both out and then realised they were actually two cameras that I'd failed to spot. I shot them both down, figured the run was over before it had even begun, and so hit restart. In run three, I carried out the same route as the previous run, but this time tried hopping through the garden to no avail. I got spotted, took out a few guards, and then got taken out myself. Fortunately, I did save the game just before the garden hopping, so hit reload, and in run four, I headed toward the metal gate, and unfortunately had forgotten all about the camera again, so got spotted again, so hit reload. In run 5, I headed through the metal gate, but this time managed to avoid the camera's gaze by hugging the wall, and then proceeded along through the shrubbery to the end of the road. After getting to the end, I spotted some boys in blue, and wondered where I could possibly go from here. I decided to head in the opposite direction across a small bridge, and unfortunately got spotted by yet another camera. I shot the thing, took out the two guards, and then got taken out myself, so hit reload. For run 6, I made sure to shoot the camera before heading across the bridge and then proceeded through the bushes toward another group of blue boys. Using my instinct, I noticed one of the targets hobbling along in the background, which was good news because it meant I was in the right area. That being said, I had no idea how to get past either of these duos, so tried using my coins to distract. Annoyingly, it didn't work out too well, and although I managed to take them both out, the firing of their rifles had alerted everybody nearby. Still, I managed to escape with a few cuts and scrapes, and ineffectively disappeared into the bushes. I flipped a switch to a small hut, which didn't seem to do anything, and then headed out into the open, which, of course, led to my demise, so here reload. For run 7, I tried using my coins to distract the duo again, but unfortunately couldn't make it work, got spotted, so hit reload. For run 8, I decided to not cross the bridge, and managed to sneak past the first blue group completely undetected. I headed further inland, destroyed one of the cameras attached to the small hut, and then found that one of the targets was the current tenant. I darted across the path just before the target came out of the building and managed to press on without being spotted. I shot the next camera and tried flicking those switches again, but nothing happened. After that, I continued onward through the very large and convenient patch of bush, and then shot yet another camera above a small hut. After reaching the end of the bush, I shot another camera and then checked the map to see where I was to find out where the tunnel before me led to. I had no idea as I wasn't familiar with this map at all, but that didn't matter. My instinct revealed that the target was now occupying this small building, and so after proceeding around the corner and picking up a screwdriver from the nearby shed, I turned off the air conditioning to the building to which the current tenant came to investigate. After making sure the coast was clear, I waited for him to switch it back on, then choked him out and dumped his body. I then picked up his key, waited for the guard to move along, and headed in. Inside, I found a couple of pieces of intel, one of which was a key card to get into the other small building our target had travelled through. I headed back that way and entered 
entered into the botany lab. I knocked out the two lab assistants and then after stealing one of their outfits, I had the game freak out on me and the frame rate dropped to below zero. I dumped their bodies once it was back on track and then tampered with a plant sample, not really knowing what I was doing. I changed back into my suit as it was much more comfortable and then headed back to the other small building where the target had moved to. I peered through the window and realized that there were no guards in there with him. Unfortunately, they were posted on both doors, so I couldn't actually get in there to take him out. As I was trying to figure it all out, the target just made a mad break for it and sped off like Sonic toward the botany hut. Apparently, his sixth sense had informed him that I destroyed his plant. Whilst in hot pursuit, I did get spotted, and once I was in the hut with the target, Jorge Franco, I got cornered, so shot the target and then hit restart. In run 9, I decided to explore the town a little bit. I headed into the nearby store and 47 asked for the most random thing. I'd like to buy some glue, please. The store owner replied, stating that he sold the last bit to the mechanic next door, so I went and spoke with him. Do you sell glue? To which he replied, I love and then proceeded to not give me the glue. I then found a sleeping and hungover musician, so I turned the tap on nearby and woke him up. He thanked me for waking him up, I wished him luck in his endeavours, and then knocked him out. I then went on a rampage, got caught, and here restart. In run 10, I headed toward a nearby workshop, picked up a crowbar to use as a melee weapon, and then headed toward the compound area. I headed over the wall, through the security hut, took out the guards, then through the metal gate, and through the bushes. After shooting the first camera, one of the guards patrolling became suspicious, which completely derailed his walk pattern. I pressed on, shooting more cameras, picked up the screwdriver, turned off the AC, knocked out the high-vis man, entered into Franco's hut, saved the game, and then lie in wait for Franco to show up. Once he was close, I hopped into the nearby crate just in time to watch him enter, climbed out, and then knocked him out with the crowbar, only to be spotted through the window by somebody passing by, so with that, I hit reload. In run 11, I decided to just shoot him instead, which worked well, and then I dragged and dumped his body. My next task was getting out of the hut, so I brought the nearby guard in with the drop of a coin and then launched a crowbar at his head and dumped his body. I'd finally taken out one of the targets, but was now in dangerous territory as I had absolutely no idea where to head next and had no opportunities to save the game as I'd already used it to take out Franco. I headed through the nearby tunnel and came through to my next target's luxury home, riddled with blood-hungry guards. I managed to choke one out and I swear as I was doing so, he whispered, I have a family. I dumped his body and dropped his weapons nearby and then proceeded along the dock. I proceeded around the outskirts of the property and headed on over toward a secluded area where a hippo and a hippo wrangler were currently involved in the feeding process. I managed to sneak down and knock out the nearby guard and then found some intel suggesting that the hippo had been fed so much meat that he was refusing to eat anything else. Of course, this suggested to me that if I were to push somebody into the water, he'd more than likely have a munch on some human, but trying to get one of the targets over here was a plan I wasn't in the mood to figure out. I knocked out the hippo wrangler and then proceeded through the nearby caverns, finding what I assume Nicolas Cage's character in National Treasure dreamt about at night. I carried on and knocked out a couple of guards and made sure to drag their bodies back toward the hippo enclosure and hid them in the tall grass, picked up a keycard, and proceeded into the dank cave system beneath the compound. I proceeded into an underground cave system with a submarine and found there were so many guards and workers that there was no feasible way of sneaking through, so looked for another route. Unfortunately, I did get spotted, so shot two guards dead, which of of course ruined my silent assassin status and eventually made it toward yet another open area labelled the Smuggler's Cave on my map. There were so many guards and so many entrances and exits I felt a little bit overwhelmed with how on earth I was supposed to get through and where on earth I was supposed to go. However, after spending a lengthy amount of time reviewing the map, I made a break for one of the exits, got spotted as I was very clearly out in the open and found myself within the property itself. After heading up some stairs, I eventually came out near to my next target, Rico Delgado so took him out with a clean headshot and then decided to take out all of his guards. Of course, I eventually got taken out and so hit restart. For run 12, I got spotted and then run 13, the game crashed and corrupted the video file. So unfortunately, I can't show you either of these runs, but don't worry, you didn't miss anything. For run 14, I decided I'd like to take a break from heading straight into the Colombian jungle. So headed in the direction of our third target, Andrea Martinez. I headed toward her little fortress and then down some stairs steps which led toward a path along the water. I found a nearby entrance and whilst unlocking the gate, I got spotted by the camera. I shot that and the nearby guard, but unfortunately by this point the entire country was now on high alert. I climbed up the nearby pipe and onto a balcony to have Martinez run directly into my arms. 
I shot her dead and then got taken out myself, so I hit restart. For run 15, I headed the same route and this time waited for the camera to turn before unlocking the gate. I launched a lead pipe at the back of the guard's head, but unfortunately, an innocent bystander had waltzed around the corner and seen what I'd just done. I shot him dead and then the alerted guard, so ran up the stairs, killed Martinez and then got killed myself. In run 16, I approached the compound from the other side and found a section of the wall had been damaged, which allowed me to climb over undetected. I shot the nearby camera, which to my surprise didn't alert the nearby guard, and then saved the game as I wanted to see what would happen when I took him out. I couldn't knock him out with a melee attack because the tree was in the way, so I stood back and flung the pipe with all my might to the back of his skull, which did the trick. I hid his body in the tall grass and then climbed the stairs to overhear Martinez say she needed to make a few phone calls downstairs. I headed back down the stairs and climbed into the meeting room where I assumed Martinez would be heading and found a water fountain that I could puncture hovering precariously over an exposed plug socket. For this execution to work I needed a screwdriver and the only screwdriver I'd found so far was deep in the middle of the jungle inside a tiny little shed. I climbed out of the window just before Martinez and her assistant entered and hung around to listen to her conversation with the usual villain spiel involving bribery and corruption and blah blah blah. After she finished the call, I made sure to note that the assistant exited the room first and then Martinez followed suit but crossed over the plug socket to do so. This piece of information essentially sealed her fate in my eyes, so with that I hit restart. In run 17, I began a thorough search of the entire town looking for a screwdriver as the thought of heading over to the jungle to pick one up and then heading all the way back seemed like a massive headache. After a couple of minutes of searching, I gave up but not before almost dying by entering the wrong building and stumbling across a dead drummer who'd clearly partied a little too hard the night before. I scoured the entire map looking for a screwdriver and eventually came face to face with Martinez who greeted me in a very friendly manner. Nice day, isn't it? To which I responded with, I then got shot so here we start. I decided to bite the bullet so began my journey into the jungle and just before entering the shed with the screwdriver, I got spotted by a camera I'd forgotten to destroy. After being hounded by a bunch of guards, I eventually decided to hit restart because there was no way I was going to be making it out alive. In run 19, I scoured the town once more looking for a screwdriver and eventually stumbled across a small bar with a locked door that led down into a basement. I clearly stumbled across something I wasn't supposed to see as I was greeted with absolute hostility in the barrel of a gun. Unfortunately for them, I was quicker on the draw and took them both out, however one of them had fired at me which had alerted a nearby guard. I managed to find a secret entrance which led into the underground cavern system, so headed through and came across some more guards who I managed to take out with no issues. I then stole one of their outfits because I wanted very much to be able to explore the underground area without having to sneak around and eventually stumbled across the crew quarters. Inside, I found the security system so knocked out the guard and destroyed the video evidence, then headed through a nearby door and entered into the submarine dock. After all that I headed back the way I'd entered near the bar and found the poor guards now in body bags. I then went and found the dead drummer, stole his outfit, woke up one of his friends, then knocked him out with a brick of cocaine, got shot and killed so hit restart. In run 20, after admitting defeat to finding a screwdriver anywhere else on the map, I headed back to the jungle and unfortunately when shooting one of the cameras my arm was spotted poking out of the bushes. So. I was killed, so here we start. In run 21, I managed to take the camera out and almost got spotted on the second one, but managed to make it out alive. I carried on, picked up the elusive screwdriver from the small shed, turned off the AC to Franco's hut, knocked out the dude and dumped his body, picked up the key to the hut and hopped into the crate just before Franco entered. When I shot him in the face, apparently I didn't shoot him in the face and as such, the guards became alerted to an attempt on Franco's life, so came to take me out. But the joke was on them because I had the ability to time travel. In run 22, I made it to Franco's hut in good time, which unfortunately meant I had to wait ages before he arrived himself. I then hopped into the crate and saved the game. I hopped out, launched a screwdriver at Franco's head, which worked wonders, and then dumped his body. Again, I needed to figure out how to get past the guard, so tossed a coin and he came to investigate. Or so I thought. What actually happened was even better. After killing Franco, the guards decided that Franco had just vanished or wandered off again, meaning they weren't going to bother looking for him and so wandered off themselves. Which is insane, considering there were only two exits to the hut and both of them were being guarded by the two guards following Franco. They literally gaslit themselves into thinking Franco had somehow left the hut. Either way, that was great news because all I had to do was kill Franco and then wait a few seconds and I could leave unscathed. I retraced my steps and managed to leave the compound the way I'd entered and now I finally 
only had a screwdriver to take out Martinez. I headed over the boundary wall and climbed through the open window, fiddled with the electrics, poured water all over it, and then switched it on, turning the floor into a human-sized flytrap. Now, assuming that Martinez was officially taken care of, I left the compound because as long as she walked over the plug socket, everything was golden. So I decided to head back to the bar and gain entry into the underground cavern again, but this time I needed to take out the bartender and steal his key. After pushing through the door, I got a notification in the top left corner, like a bad mobile advert informing me that unfortunately Martinez's elderly assistant was investigating the distraction and sadly, but bravely, died in Martinez's place. I carried on down the stairs, absolutely devastated over the wrong loss of life, and knocked out both of the guards. After dumping both of their bodies, I headed through the secret passage and slowly but surely made my way back to the smuggler's cave. Again, it was impossible to make any headway through without being spotted, and whilst being shot at, I clambered over a bottomless pit, which they all saw me do, and then, like Franco's guards, gaslit themselves into thinking they didn't see me do it, and I'd somehow vanished. Of course, there was no way out, so I hit reload to try again. Run 23 saw me acting as a jack-in-the-box again, but for some reason, this time when launching the screwdriver, it was seen somehow, so I hit reload. In run 24, I again hopped out and killed Franco, and then decided instead of heading back to take care of Martinez, because taking her out with a screwdriver wasn't going to work, I would head through another mineshaft instead. I apparently got spotted by a camera, but I'll roll the clip and you tell me if you think this counts or not. because I definitely don't think that I got spotted, but you be the judge. This time it took me directly to the smuggler's cave, but from a different direction than what I was used to, but it was the exact direction that I wanted. I managed to sneak through and shoot the camera whilst avoiding all the guards and headed up a staircase that led directly into Delgado's home. I opened the door and came across a crippled guard hobbling along the hallways, clearly wanting people to ask if he was okay. I'm sure that if he'd spotted my bald head gleaming under the fluorescent lighting, he would have forgotten all about his tragic injury. I headed into a nearby room which contained piles and piles of cash, like that scene from The Dark Knight, where I found some further intel which I didn't read in a bottle of lethal pills. I headed back out into the hallway and tried to manoeuvre around, but there were two guards patrolling the main area, so it made it very tricky to determine what to do next. I managed to make it across the gap without being spotted, and opened the door, finding two chefs hard at work. I then found that the crippled guard was actually conducting a loop of the hallways, and he was heading directly toward me through the kitchen. I ducked behind the door just as he pushed through, and fortunately for me, he was too preoccupied with feeling sorry for him himself that he completely missed me. I followed him from behind and then headed right, but unfortunately was spotted by one of the other guards. I quickly headed up the nearby staircase and came face to face with Delgado himself, so launched the screwdriver directly toward his cranium, shot the helper, then got shot myself, so hit reload. In run 25, I woke up once again inside the wooden crates, and after climbing out, I took out Franco and then waited for the guards to move along. I found a glitch that was slightly amusing, and then when the guard had moved along, I headed back toward that underground path passageway and into the smuggler's cave. Instead of shooting the camera, I launched a screwdriver at it, and in doing so, I made the nearby guard go upstairs to investigate, annoyingly the direction that I needed to go myself. I equipped my crowbar, and then forgetting that when you pick up an item that becomes the primary tool, I launched a screwdriver at the guard's head. I then dragged his body to the middle of the stairwell to ensure nobody spotted him, then headed up the stairs and through the door. Back in the hallway, I was trying to figure out where the crippled guard was, and to my horror, he happened to find me first. Like a sore loser who had just lost a game of hide and seek, I launched a screwdriver at his head as well. The guards were alerted and I got taken out, so hit reload. In run 26, whilst heading into the underground tunnel system, I got spotted by the guards, so decided to take them all out, and after that, headed up the stairs where nobody had been alerted about the massacre below. I dipped into the money room, turned on the money counter machine, and then lie in wait for the crippled guard to come and investigate. As he entered, I took him out and then dumped his body. Next, I headed back into the hallway and tossed a coin, causing the next guard to come and investigate, and so took him out too and then dumped his body. I headed back into the main area and knocked out the final guard, peeked around the corner for just a second, and unfortunately got spotted by a camera, alerting a guard in the room next door to come out and ask some questions. Unfortunately for him, I wasn't using my crowbar anymore. I headed into the room and took out the remaining guy and found the security system, which I deactivated, along with a safe, which I picked the code up from somewhere, not sure where, which had a brown paper packaging tied up with strings, of course being one of my favourite things. What isn't one of my favourite things, however, is the package actually contained a bomb. I dumped the bodies in the nearby locker and then wandered into a very intense interrogation room, complete with blood-stained floor and awful music. All yours for the low, low price of telling me everything you know. It's free, really. 
real estate. After poking about and then heading out, I came across a very large wine cellar and very quickly took out the help and dumped their bodies. I then found the kitchen again, but this time from a different angle. At this point, I was starting to get my bearings on the geography of the map, which was great. After trying to lure the chef into the wine cellar and failing, I decided to just sneak in and take him out, which to my surprise seemed to work, except the other chef decided at that very moment to spin around and spotted me causing grievous bodily harm to his friend. Because I believe in leaving no witnesses, I launched my crowbar at his head and then proceeded to the adjoining room where two more members of the help were sat having a casual chat. I knocked them both out without a care in the world and dumped both of their bodies and then went back and dumped the chef's bodies in the nearby freezer. After that, I headed up the stairs and came across a large open plan bar area with only two staff members ambling about. I waited for a while to listen to their conversation, which had nothing to do with me and also kept an eye out for any additional staff who may wish to join the party, but to my delight, nobody did. I headed back downstairs and picked up a staff member's outfit and then proceeded up the main staircase to have a nosy about. I found Delgado, who seemed to be fairly content tent with a bold stranger wandering around his bedroom, but when I attempted to make the bed by carefully lifting a photograph, he decided that enough was enough and became very suspicious. So I knocked him out and snapped his neck and then picked up a set of car keys as a means of exiting the mission later on. It became a bit of a free-for-all with the guards now being on high alert, as to be fair, I had just murdered their boss in cold blood, so I stole an outfit and pressed on throughout the house looking for further intel and eventually I was taken out. For run 27, I decided to start afresh instead of hopping out of the wooden crate in Franco's hut. I sped through the usual route and managed to time it fairly well so that I wasn't waiting inside Franco's hut for too long before he showed up. I didn't save the game here but climbed out and launched a screwdriver at his head, crossing my fingers and my toes that nobody saw what I'd done through the window. And then once the coast was clear, I pressed on through the underground cave system and into the smuggler's cave. Again, I launched the screwdriver at the camera which caused the guard to go up the stairs to investigate and then equipped my crowbar to knock him out and then again forgot that when you pick up an item it becomes the active item, so again, instead of launching my crowbar at the back of his head, I launched the screwdriver instead. I dragged his body up the stairs and into the room with piles of cash, switched on the money counter and knocked out the crippled guard, knocked out the first patrolling guard and peeked from behind the wall and knocked out the other guard and then opened the door to the room with the security system. I needed to get in and destroy the camera system, but the dudes inside took a very long time to organise themselves in such a way that would allow me safe passage. Eventually, I knocked them both out and dumped both their bodies, destroyed the cameras and then headed toward the wine cellar. This time, the help had organised themselves into a way that really wasn't aiding me in my desire to knock them both out. I waited for a very long time and managed to get the drop on them, but only after several minutes of watching and waiting. I worked my way into the kitchen, making sure not to get spotted by the chefs, and then I needed to figure out how to get past the two women nattering in the laundry room. I tossed a coin into the corner of the room and had the one who was facing toward me go and investigate, meaning I could take out the one with her back to me and then take out the curious one. I then headed backward because there was a room I hadn't yet explored and wanted to see what was in there, so I lured one of the guards out into the hallway and then the interrogation room and knocked him out there. Then the next one I took out in the hallway, the third I took out in the hallway, and the fourth I just headed inside and tossed something at his head. Inside I didn't find anything useful, and the staircase I climbed led to an area surrounded by guards, so I headed back toward the hallway and climbed another staircase, it too littered with guards. I headed back to the staircase I climbed in the last run, ducked behind the snooker table, and then finally saved the game. I knocked out the two staff members and then noticed Delgado walking along the perimeter of the property, not very far from me at all, completely unguarded. Of of course, there were guards all around, but it was important to know that there wasn't a guard that followed him around the property. I knew that Delgado entered through the main hallway of the property, so I took to luring the several guards currently occupying that area into my area so I could take them out. Eventually, after tossing enough coins and swinging enough crowbars, I was able to enter the hallway without any guards present. Now, with all the guards taken care of and armed with the knowledge that Delgado walked through this hallway, I set myself up into a prime position, and as he entered, I tossed a coin beneath the giant horrendously designed piece of ceiling decor, and when Delgado went to investigate, I dropped it like a bale of hay, and it squashed him flat. With that, I headed back down the stairs to retrace my steps, and leave the way I entered to attempt to take on Martinez. But, to my absolute despair, the door I'd come through was locked and required a keycard to get back through. A keycard I didn't have, hence uh, the despair. I tried shooting it to no avail, and after retracing my steps past all the guards I killed, hoping to find a keycard and not finding one, I 
tried heading out the rear of the property and got spotted, so shot a guard and then hit reload. In run 28, I knocked out the staff and then headed toward the rear of the property and tossed a coin in the hopes that the passing Delgado would come and investigate. I don't think I tossed it far enough and unfortunately a chef came to investigate instead. I didn't do anything though as to not draw any attention to myself, but that now meant I was down a coin. I tossed a coin into the path of Delgado and he picked it up and then tried to get him to come nearer, but unfortunately I tossed it too far away and he began to move on. So I shot him dead and did a runner. I stole a gardener's outfit, which didn't fool any of the guard, and then they shot me dead, so I hit reload. In run 29, I tried the same tactic again, but this time managed to get Delgado to come all the way into his own home by simply tossing some coins, and I managed to take him out successfully without alerting anybody nearby. With that, I finally found the way that I'd be taking out Delgado, so dragged his body into the nearby wine cellar and punctured the wine barrel, making it look like he slipped and broke his neck. For some reason, I then punctured another barrel and flipped on the electrics, causing the floor to turn into a sea of electricity, which I then stood on and died. In run 30, I restarted from the beginning and headed the usual route, and for the first time realised that I didn't actually need to enter through this blue security hut to get into the jungle. Every run prior to this, I had been going through the hut and knocking out the two guards, but finding a slightly quicker route was liberating. This meant I had more time to reach Franco's hut before he arrived, giving me more freedom to take my time and avoid mistakes. As usual, I hopped out of the wooden box and launched a screwdriver at his head, but for some reason, during this assassination, I was spotted. By whom, I don't know. The guards entered, saw me climbing back into the wooden box, and so hit restart. In run 31, after knocking out the current occupant of Franco's hut, I saved the game, then entered and killed Franco in the usual way, and then hit reload. In run 32, I waited outside of the hut, and once Franco had entered, I tampered with the air conditioning unit again, but Franco actually couldn't have cared any less about the furnace he was currently engulfed in and went about his usual business. So I decided to shoot him through the glass, and to my surprise, nobody batted an eyelid. This made the process of escaping this area a lot easier as I didn't have to wait for the guards to move along before I could leave the hut. I then headed into Smuggler's Cave and this time remembered to not launch a screwdriver at the guard's head but instead choked him out in the stairwell. I then headed back into the cave to try and find a keycard so I could exit through the door above but couldn't find one so distracted one of the goons and knocked him out with a brick of cocaine in the hopes that he would be carrying a keycard but he wasn't and in the process of shifting his body I got spotted so took everyone out, stole an outfit and headed deeper into the underground cavern. I eventually came out into the crew quarters and made my presence very well known and then found a keycard just lying on the nearby desk. I picked it up and hurried back through the cave and up to the stairs into Delgado's home to test it out and it worked. My only concern was that it seemed an awful lot of trouble to go through just to pick up the keycard just so I could exit the way I'd entered, so with that in mind I hit restart. In run 33 I wanted to see if I could gain entry into the cavern system a different route, so headed toward the nearby doctor's office, shot the camera and then two guards and headed underground. I made my way through and came to the smuggler's cave via a different tunnel. Uh, this tunnel didn't seem like it was going to be any good, but annoyingly the connection for the game was playing up, so I had to restart. In run 34 I tried the same again but this time tried to lure the guards away as ultimately I didn't want to kill them in the final run. I tried choking one of them out when I thought I was out of sight, but apparently not, and the other guard came running, so I knocked him out as well. I then headed over to the small mechanic station because I'd found another amusing glitch where the woman was floating several feet above where her chair was. I then had a flit around the map and made my way back to the open window of the meeting room where I tried to fry Martinez and then had a clamber around the walls and made my way to the top floor. After a while, Martinez showed up and I had a perfect shot on her, but unfortunately there were approximately 26 guards in there as well. After she left, I headed in through the doors and knocked out and killed all of the guards, and of course this run had very quickly become a disaster, so hit restart. In run 35, I headed straight toward Martinez's compound and on the way made a sharp right. I headed up a nearby staircase and got caught trespassing by a builder, but what did I find at the top? A screwdriver! I nabbed the screwdriver and crept over the wall to find Martinez engaged in a phone call, so drew my weapon and took her and her secretary out and then hit restart. In run 36, I climbed the stairs again and this time waited for the builder to turn his back, then nabbed the screwdriver and hopped down, then traversed over toward Martinez and showed up just as her phone call ended. Her secretary left first and then Martinez followed and then I climbed through and messed with the electrics and water dispenser again, having the water slide off my bald head like water off a duck's back. I headed upstairs and managed to knock out all the guards and the secretary before Martinez arrived and after that she headed back to the meeting room but I managed to get there first, switched on the electric and climbed out of the window to watch her fry, but very frustratingly, she alerted the nearby guard who came to investigate instead. So I climbed through and launched the screwdriver at her head, which then 
gave me an idea. In run 37, I picked up the screwdriver and headed over to Martinez, and this time, as she was leaving the meeting room behind her secretary, I launched the screwdriver at her head and took her out without anybody noticing. I dragged her body out the window and dumped it in the dumpster under the stairs and hopped back over the wall and fled the scene. Martinez had been taken out in under two minutes. This newfound victory put the wind in my sails and I was very keen to finally finish the mission and sail away from Colombia. I headed over to Franco's hut and took him out by firing my weapon through the window and like last time nobody noticed. I pushed through the underground cabin, through the smuggler's cave and up the stairs into Delgado's complex, took out all the guards in the hallway and then headed into the kitchen where I accidentally stabbed the chefs instead of knocking them out, so just carried on the rampage by shooting the rest of the staff and heading up the stairs. Unfortunately, one of the guards heard some sort of the commotion and came to investigate and found a dead body on the floor. Wonder how that got there and then another guard came from the other direction and then all hell broke loose. I then ran around the perimeter of the property shooting all the guards until eventually I was taken out myself. In run 38 I took out Martinez in the same way but this time launched her out of the window into the water to dispose of the body instead. I then headed over to Franco's hut but unfortunately Franco was already there before I could take out the other guy so I hit restart. In run 39 I took out Martinez and then Franco and then once I I was inside Delgado's complex, I managed to knock the chefs out this time instead of stabbing them to death. I then entered the wine cellar to see if either of the staff would investigate the punctured wine barrels, but they didn't, but they did however, unfortunately for them, notice me. After taking care of the sorry duo, I pulled a fire alarm just to see what would happen and if Delgado would head downstairs for an easier takedown, but unfortunately for me, he sort of just stayed where he was. A couple of guards entered at the wrong time, so got taken out, and then eventually I was surrounded and got taken out myself. In run 40, when attempting to pick up the screwdriver, I decided to knock out the builder for some reason, which was spotted immediately. I then took out both Martinez and her secretary, and then hit restart. In run 41, I took out Martinez, then Franco, and then in the underground cave system, I saved the game after I tossed a coin to coax the guard toward me. I choked him out and dragged his body into the cave just to make sure nobody stumbled across it, and then headed upstairs into the complex. I took out all the guards and then destroyed the surveillance system, then the chefs, then the help, then the help upstairs, then I watched Delgado for what seemed like an age, travel across the entirety of the property and then eventually head down the outdoor set of stairs and toss the coin so he'd come and investigate. After repositioning myself and almost getting spotted, I managed to take Delgado out without any witnesses and then picked up his sports car keys, which happened to be parked in a garage very near to where I was. I dragged his body behind the bar and then tried to figure out how to get out of the property without being spotted. To be fair, it wasn't that difficult at all and after tossing a coin and having the guards turn their backs, I was able to make a break for the garage, unlock the door, steal Delgado's sports car and speed off into the sunset. I'd not only finally completed the mission for the first time, I'd also managed to find the path for the perfect run. So after 41 runs, it was time to turn all the HUD options off and attempt the mission for the final time. So without further ado, I present to you my no HUD, suit only, silent assassin, master difficulty run of Three-Headed Serpent. Delgado coming down to us dirty villagers to unveil some ridiculous statue. Sure, I went to the farm and the farm was Martinez is down. Good work.
something over there that we visit. Typical. Ah. Franco confirmed down. Nice work, 47. have a possible situation. Stay tuned.
All targets neutralized. This should paralyze the cartel. Excellent work, 47. Now head for an exit.
thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then do be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all future episodes. I'll catch you in the next one, ready to take on 47's next mission in the bustling city of Mumbai.